Hi everyone, hope you had a good Christmas, good holiday, still New Year's to come this week. So uh, working away, thought we'd share a couple things with you, just an update on the fuel tanks. Uh, I think I mentioned last time we're using Sky Design's extended range fuel tanks. These are big tanks, they're almost eight feet in length. And so a lot of work. A few things I'm doing here, I thought maybe I'd share with you. There, you know, the skins here are so long that the DR uh, dimpler won't actually reach all the way into here due to the, the skin being uh, bent. So one of the things I did worked out really well is I had this uh, big block of steel left over from when I built my RV4 in 1980-something. And I put the male die for the dimple in it and then just moved the skin across it. I did, basically couldn't pick up these last six holes. And then set the gun on uh, real low pressure so it was barely moving okay and you just hold it on over top of the hole squeeze the trigger and it only takes a couple of hits and it mushes it down real nice they're the nice rounded dimple dies from uh, uh, cleveland they are the tank dies so they leave a little deeper one uh just to allow for any you know in the tank you get some of the goop maybe so you get the rivets are set really nicely. We've already done one skin. We'll show it to you later. We thought we'd walk you through the process here today. So you can see I've got it all dimpled, which really takes quite a long time here to get finished, especially doing this extra bit here that I mentioned. And then you can see I've scotch brighted all the areas where we're going to put some of the Pro Seal. So the idea here is to get started and what I do is preload the rivets here on the back side, you can see. And I use this uh, riveting tape. Aircraft Spruce has this. It's actually made by 3M. It works really, really nicely. And it, uh, from all the years I've been building, I've actually been using the Scotch removable tape. This seems to work much nicer. And you can see the rivets quite clearly. And so I've preloaded all the rivets here. And the nice thing about that is that the sticky part of it is actually not where the rivets are. Is that correct? Yes, we can actually see it, the sticky parts on the sides here. So it's clear with no stickiness over top of the rivets. So it peels off much nicer, I notice, than the Scotch removable tape, which sometimes, because you're pounding on the rivet from this side, tears the tape, and then you end up peeling them off quite, it's just sometimes a mess. This does a really nice job. So I'd recommend try using that. So these are all the lower skin reinforcements that are now going to go on. These have all been pre-drilled and dimpled and scotch brighted as well. And by the way, before I loaded the rivets, this was all cleaned with acetone very thoroughly. And these will be clean now with acetone and each one put on. We're going to mix up some Pro Seal, put it along here, put it in place, and then back rivet. So we'll slide this over top of our back riveting uh, piece of steel. And one of the things you want to be careful of, you can stay there looking, I'll grab this steel plate. Here's our piece of back riveting plate, which is also uh, from Cleveland Aircraft Tool. And we'll slide this underneath each section that we're going to rivet. Now, I caution you to be careful here. You want to make certain that you don't get off of this back riveting plate when you start trying to pound these. So, uh, It'll just make a mess and go right into your workbench there. So it goes pretty quickly. I'll mix up uh, enough Pro Seal maybe to do half at a time. And then we'll go back using uh, the gun with the Flame Master. And we'll show you that. And then I'll lay a little bead along each one just to make certain we don't have any leaks. I probably use too much Pro Seal. Come through the shop that have leaks in them and uh, it just destroys the paint job so uh, I'll probably use too much extra pro seal but I don't want any leaks so we show you this process as we go through it today and a series of pictures most likely and uh, and the use of the gun as well but uh, 
This is just one small step. Building these tanks is quite a bit of work because next we'll move into doing all the ribs, which is a slow process. And then we've got fuel senders to put in place and the end ribs to close up and some uh, reinforcements right at the root end where the aileron actuation uh, rib is. So a uh, lot of work to do here today. We'll share it with you. Okay, so as I mentioned a minute ago, here's one I completed just the other day, the Procyos curing. All of these are now back riveted in place, and you can see I laid an extra little bit of Procyo along each edge. I mean, the idea is to keep any fuel from getting to the rivet hole, so hopefully we've accomplished that. You can see over here at this end, we've got the fuel cap riveted on. And uh, yes, I know I forgot the little vent line holder, but uh, I'll take care of that later. And then down at this end, externally, we've got the fuel drain mounted here, okay? The thing to pay attention to is this one goes on the outside of the tank, where the same type of uh, bulkhead fitting, if you want to call it that, goes on the inside of the root rib. And the reason you want it on the outside here is if it was on the inside, it would leave water entrapped in the fuel tank. So we want to be careful here and not have a ridge of pro seal. You can see I made channels going into it so we can make certain we drain any water out of the tank into the fuel drain. So let's get started on the other one and hopefully we'll get it done this morning as well. All right, I'm sure I look tired. It's been a long day. So earlier this morning we showed you I started on the other fuel tank, which would be the right fuel tank, and I put all the lower uh, stiffeners in on the bottom side. So those all got riveted this morning. Then this afternoon I convinced Carol to come out and give me a hand. And on the left fuel tank, which I had done the stiffeners the other day, we managed to get seven of the nine ribs in here. These are big tanks, as I mentioned. They are uh, 40, I think they're 42 gallons or something. So they're almost eight feet long. So there's a lot more ribs than the standard 20 gallon or 30 gallon tanks on the various RVs. Uh, they came out really nice. I'm real pleased with the riveting. Carol was a, just a huge help. I would tell you it goes really fast with a two person. It really, you need two people. I would mix up enough uh, Pro Seal to do two ribs at a time and uh, Cleco them in, and Carol would load them up with rivets, and I would rivet them. She'd get the Clecos out and reload them up. So that went pretty well. And now what I'm going to do is use the gun with the Pro Seal and seal along all the edges and the leading edge of each rib as per the instruction. You can see here I did uh, attach the vent line clip out here in the outboard right beneath the fuel cap. So that's all done. And uh, anyway, it's a mess with the Pro Seal. It's just kind of nerve wracking. Everything gets a wreck. Wear old clothes. And uh, although this was my uh, Sunday go to church shirt, I got it all dirty. Anyway, um, thanks for watching.